Welcome back to the Director's Garage. I am your host and resident idiot Michael, and today, folks, this is the day. What's that doing? <laughs> I don't know. This is the day we reveal the new DAC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. <laughs> now, uh, this is the DAC that's going to be at the heart of my rig going forward. I did a ton of research. I gathered a lot of cash, and I went back and forth. I waffled like nothing. Uh, I, I'll talk about some of the roads not taken, and I'll explain how I came to the decision on this particular DAC. What's in the box? So right here is the monstrosity of a box I gotta open and uh, we're gonna get into it right now. I'm gonna tip it on its side so that we can get to the flaps here. They're glued down. And you can kind of see if you read the writing, you can kind of check out what it is, but you know, this is the fun part. I'm super excited about this. <laughs> and boy, what a mess. Hang on, I'm gonna try and slide this thing out. Ah. To kind of poop it out. That's what, oh, let's see if we can tell. Yeah, there it is. There it is. Woo! Look at that. All right. And I think you can tell from the basic uh, script here. We're talking about the DCS DAC, and the one I went with is called the Lena. Now, uh, taking this off of here, there are a lot of reasons for this. DAC. It's, it's the DAC that really most captured my imagination since its introduction last year. It's been received a ton of praise. It's on the top five lists of many, many uh, YouTubers and uh, audiophiles, and it's really, really rich in features. And, and now to be fair, most of the DACs in this price range receive pretty much universal praise. This thing is north of $10,000. Uh, and if you'll remember, I had the Cord Hugo TT2 and the M Scaler. So I needed to purchase a, a deck that struck north of that stack in terms of sound quality. And, and I do think we've made it here with the Lena. Now looking at some documentation, there's an orientation little booklet here that talks about what's in the box here. There are a lot of uh, descriptions and features about how to navigate this thing, uh, where the, what the menus look like over here. You can see um, how to hook up the, the signals, uh, the cabling all back, uh, all back behind it, and uh, how to power it up, all that stuff. I have a pretty good idea of how this DAC works. I, in fairness, I did a lot of due diligence. Sorry, I'm sweating. Um, I did a lot of due diligence before just buying the stack. I, I really made sure that it was what I think is going to strike pretty close to the target. So let's dig a little bit deeper. It looks like you get a little polishing cloth here, and I showed you some of the documentation. And uh, here's a foam insert that's going to reveal here's the top of the unit. So it's very understated black affair here. It's very, very heavy. You can see. The front of the device is a touch screen. Uh, there's no physical buttons here. These are touch sensitive points that allow you to navigate uh, on the through the menu systems. And on the back of the unit, you've got your unbalanced and balanced uh, RCA and XLR outputs. You've got AES EBU. Here's where your word clock goes. More on that in a second. Speedifs USB, you can actually put a drive off of this, hang a drive off of it. Uh, and then you've got your power adapter and your network adapter USB. And, and part of the appeal of this DAC is that it also streams. So how did I come to this decision? Well, Part of it is I, I, I made some qualifications, and the first one that in order to make the short list of DACs I was considering, it had to be a no compromise DAC. Uh, I wanted a DAC that I could live with for years, and I think in the Lena, and I'll tell you why in a few, this is the DAC that can last the longest. Now digging down underneath the foam, you come to a whole bunch of cables. You've got RCAs, you've got a bunch of power options for different 
places and here's the US option so we'll be taking that out you've got an Ethernet cable fine and you've got another shorty Ethernet cable I wonder what that's about so I want to talk for a second about some of the roads not taken now the Dave was obviously an option it's certainly in the same price bracket but I already had a great cord setup, and I still have the TT1 down there driving my speaker setup. But the goal of this was in part to try a different house sound, and the Dave, despite its greatness, is also getting kind of long in the tooth. It's an old product now by today's standards, I feel and I honestly believe that that's the next product that Cord will choose to upgrade and update. I think it's long overdue for an overhaul, if nothing else. Now the next stack that I nearly pulled the trigger on about three or four times was the Weiss 501. It's the perfect form factor and it has impeccable reviews. There's even an analog warmth dial on the inside of it that people just rave about. The main thing that held me back was its lack of internal streaming abilities. but. I was very close on picking up that deck about two or three times. Now the Mola Mola Tambaki was another strong contender, and the main reason that I didn't go that route was, I can't pronounce the name. <laughs> and part of it was the form factor. It's got this wavy design on top that I'm not really a fan of the styling, and it's hard to stack stuff on something that's got an uneven top like that. Uh, then again, not to say that if it sounds great, who really cares? And it is a very attractive product from a technical standpoint. And if the Lena doesn't work out, that and the Weiss will probably be my first two considerations for a replacement. Finally, I nearly picked up the Hollow Audio May. It's a DAC I found for resale quite a few times. I could have gotten a good deal on it and for the money, it's hard to pass over this product. Everyone loves the thing. And the main reason I didn't is because, well, everybody's got it. And, and I like surprising people and kind of zigging when people expect me to zag. And picking up the Hollow May would have surprised exactly no one. It's a deck most of you guessed that I'd be getting. And it's also, though, a monster. It takes up a lot of room on the desktop. Now this Lena deck is I'm going to set it down here and we'll do some really satisfying things. This this deck, oh that's so cool. And then we'll do the other one too while we're at it. Oh yeah. Yeah, you got to love that. You got to love that. All right. Well, the Lena deck is basically the DCS Bartok 2.0 with a few refinements. The, the circuit board is derived from the Bartok, but it's folded to fit into the more compact size. Now, most of the people who have reviewed this DAC liked it better than the Bartok 2.0. Now, since the Lena was released, the Bartok line has been upgraded with Apex technology, and that has kind of trickled down and who doesn't love a good trickle? Well, that that's trickled down from their higher end Rossini and Vivaldi decks. Now, the, with the Apex upgrade, uh, the Bartok now starts well north of $20,000. And that's really cost prohibitive for my budget. This deck is only around 12,000. Now, the one thing that's missing on this Lena deck is that external clock. And yes, I will be picking up that clock down the road, but that's a separate unit and it's going to set you back $7,000. Uh, I need to catch my breath here before dropping any more cash. Now, another real selling point for me is that the DCS Lena is a streaming deck, so I can have my entire computer system shut off and still listen to my headphones. Now, other than a portable player, I've really never had this luxury because I have a lot of hard drives with my music on it and they generate a lot of noise. Now, all of this video gear here also generates noise. So when I'm doing my reviews and test sessions on products, it's gonna be nice to be able to shut everything off and quiet the room down. 
Now inside this thing is something called ring DAC technology. I have no idea what it means. But it's a different approach to decoding digital signals than say an R2R DAC or a ladder DAC. Cord does a whole different thing too. And they describe this sound as transparent. And that I kind of like transparent, personally, you know. It's been described as less analytical than the chord sound, and that interests me because I was looking to move a little away from some of that over detail, that hyper detail. And it's why the hollow may was really in the running up until the last possible minute when I pulled the trigger on this thing. That's a musical DAC, and it trends away from the analytical side, the Lena, though also has one of the best crossfeed circuits available, and that intrigued me too. Another big part of the decision though was upgradability, and this thing is very upgradable. Uh, just last month, DCS sent out a firmware flash for this that added a whole bunch of features like volume control. They can do some amazing things with firmware, and because of this, I think this DAC will stay relevant for the longest time of all the other DACs that I considered. So let me clear everything up here and we're gonna head into a sound impression, but I'm gonna show off how the setup works too. Stay with me. Sound impression. All right, I'm firing up the Lena for the first time and I'm, I've got a camera trained on it. I'm sorry for the shake, but you know, I'm handheld here. Ah, too fun. Here's the home page on the DCS Lena. And again, forgive the shakiness of this uh, setup here, but these four buttons down here control, and they're not really buttons, they're just touch pads. So you can get in and you can change the different settings from network to USB, and you can mess with your sources, processing, all of this stuff. Now, the cool thing, isn't so much what you can do here as it is what you can do on your iPad. Now this app is called DCS Mosaic and what it allows you to do is fully control the Lena DAC from your app. So you don't need to be going through menus anymore. You can just go through and set up set up the device any way you want and you can also change every single setting these are all settings that you can set from inside of the Lena front screen but this is much easier it's a much easier way to go so uh, I'm very pleased that that they've done this for instance up sampling you always almost always want DSD here are your cross feeds down here the cross feeds are really interesting there's a normal sort of more common crossfeed and then there is expanse which does different things with the crossfeed settings it's very interesting you've got dsd filters up here you can play with i certainly have not even played this once yet so i'm going to kind of leave everything in default and go without the crossfeed just to get us underway now i'm going to switch the source to usb and now i can go into rune which has my title app already brought into it and I can kind of control the Lena by feeding it uh, iPad instructions which is pretty cool. Now all I had to do was load the Lena in as a source in Rune and now I've got full control of the Lena from within my Rune app. So now that the system is wired up and you kind of have an overview of how it's all put together I think it's time to give this thing a listen and let's see how cool it sounds, right? Isn't that why we're here? All right, and because it's kind of a tradition around here, I think we gotta go to the Grateful Dead for our first listen, and I'm gonna select American Beauty. The headphone I'm going to choose is the Caldera because I'm familiar with its sound now, and I really think it's one of the best headphones available. So it's for its maiden voyage, we're gonna start with Box of Rain off of American Beauty. Wow, oh, that's beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> it 
It's gorgeous. I mean, I mean, it's gorgeous. <laughs> that, that's a new sound to me. That's a new sound to me. Yeah, that's something. And what it sounds to me is clean. Like really, really clean. I mean, it's the same song I've heard a thousand times. But it's a... It just sounds a little more, I don't know, pure, uh, clean. It's it, the bass is going as deep as it ever has. And there's lovely detail. And it makes me wonder what this DAC would sound like with, with the clock, with the external clock. Because this is pretty impressive to me. Now, I don't have anything to compare it with. You know, I'm not doing an A-B or anything, but I've been living with the Macintosh as my main DAC for over a month now. And it got, I was so disappointed in it, I started using the SP-1000's DAC because I preferred it. And I also did some rewiring where I was actually using the TT-1 because the TT-1 had a better DAC sound than uh, the Macintosh, which was a little surprising to me. I don't know if it's $12,000 special, <laughs> but it's special, guys. It's, it's special. I'm very impressed with what I'm hearing out of the A8. All right. Now, this is the... This is the digital side. This is coming off of USB, off of a hard drive. Now we're gonna do something different and I'm going to stream directly into the Lena from Tidal. I'm gonna to go to some Bob Marley. So the, and the album I'm gonna go for is called Easy Skankin' in Boston, 1978. And what's amazing about this is, this is a live recording that survived since 1978 and it was unearthed from the, uh, from the, the family uh, as part of his posthumous relief, release package. And what's interesting is the sound quality. I don't know if it was recorded particularly well or if it was processed in post particularly well but check out this live skanking album and the track i'm going to go for is is called uh, uh rebel music and this is a beautiful i love this because there's there's a tremendous stage on this song and uh there's a there's just really good instrumentation uh, this has become one of my favorite bob marley albums And again, it sounds really beautiful and full and rich uh, and clean. Uh, I just don't know if it's $12,000 clean. Your mileage may vary. <laughs> it, it is gorgeous. It is gorgeous. The streaming is fantastic. I'm pretty happy with this. I don't know what's up. I mean, I should be, but I, I'm pretty happy with this thing. This is this is good stuff, guys. This is good stuff. <laughs> you know, I got to do some Diana crawl. That's just something that's got to happen on almost any one of my uh, first new gear reviews. Actually, I'm, I got to get in the habit of doing this off of the iPad because it's 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 cleaner and it's visual for you guys. And let's do the look of love. That was one, that's one of my favorites of hers. Ah, oh, the piano. I mean, it's just beautiful. It is next level. It is next level. I mean, we're getting into some pretty end game stuff here. And because that was a title streamer over USB, I actually want to hear it now coming through just 
the machine itself. And you know, it's a little cleaner. It is a little cleaner. Yeah. Wow. See, now when it was sending it to it, yeah, it was sending it 4824, and this is decoding MQA96, and it seems to me to sound a little bit cleaner, for better or worse. It's pretty cool. It's, it's just beautiful. I mean, this is a great sounding deck, and it, it should be. Okay, I'm going to do one more thing before we go, and that's just check out some Eagles really quick, because this is one of the spectacular tracks uh, in all of Eagledom, <laughs> in all of, uh, of anything I've ever heard from them, and that is the Hotel California off of this album right here, and that's Hell Freezes Over. There is something so special about... Uh, this recording and how clean it is and the reverb and the sound of the crowd and the finger on the string and it, it's just it's one of the lushest recordings certainly one of the lushest live recordings I've ever heard if you haven't had a chance to check it out and the bass drum when it kicks is molar rattling and on this caldera with this setup I'm bracing oh yeah it's unbelievable yeah. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, decay is absolutely seamless on this thing. There's a beautiful top end. It's not too bright. I haven't heard anything get too bright at all. Like never once has this thing gone, oh, that was a little harsh. And I can't always say that about my chord, my old chord setup. There's a dimensionality to the strings that just sounds rich. It's a very rich sound. I don't think it's warm. It just sounds pure. I, I really want to try this out with some other headphones. I'm going to be listening into the night with this thing and, and really putting it through its paces. I definitely want to hear that D8000 on this. I think that's going to be a killer pairing. Uh, just checking out different headphones. You know how it is when you get a new piece of gear in, and this is about as expensive as it gets. I think the only thing that cost me more was... Oh, uh, there's the vocal. It's beautiful. That reel-to-reel -reel deck is the only thing I've really got more money in. So this was a, a big one, as they say. And it's just, it's just gorgeous. It's not going to get any worse or any better. Uh, I'm going to pause it right here because we got to start wrapping this up and i got to get this episode out the door. I'm, I don't want to hold this out for weeks. I want to get this episode turned around right after the heels of that amazing D8000 episode. Now, obviously, I'm going to be doing a full review of this deck. I'm going to go through all of its features in the coming episodes. But that is the DCS Lena A. $12,000 investment in digital. I am super excited to have this system here. I can't wait to get the word clock. It's just something that is going to have to wait a while given the expenditure on this. It's going to bring the DAC up to over 20000 once I have that uh, a word clock in place. I just need to sell some more stuff so I have the funds to pick it up. And we have so much more ahead too. We're going to be doing an electrostatic episode soon. I haven't done an electrostatic episode in a long time. We're going to focus on electrostatics coming up. And I have some new stuff to show off in that area. I also have a budget headphone to audition. I'm going to be doing the uh, new 7 Hertz Timeless AE. We'll be doing a sound check of that. I unboxed it in a live stream. If you missed live streams, you know, you can subscribe right now to the Director's Garage and you won't miss any of that stuff. A and you'd be doing me a solid too. So I want to thank you for stopping by today. I hope you enjoyed me unboxing and checking out the, uh, the DCS Lena for the first time. There is so much more ahead for us and I'll see you before you know it.